you don't remove toxic people, you become more toxic. Right? Like, if we're not average, we're not basic. We are powerful. We lit. We dope. Like, we can't be basic. From this day forward, we don't do basic no more. We level up. There's no more basic. There's no more room for basic. Um, what I do recall is, uh, so I was on the basketball team, and yep. I remember practicing, I remember seeing you, I think you were on track and field, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And I remember you had those um, those things on your shoes that I always wanted to try. Do you remember this? It's like weights on your shoes or something to help you jump? Yeah, you know, so I had weights on my shoes, man. Um, really, that wasn't as much track as that was more just jumping higher, because, you know, I, you know mm. I, I actually was a... You know, basketball was actually my first love before track and field. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, I was a basketball guy, man. You know, I wasn't like, you know, I didn't make the team. Funny thing is, the reason why I didn't make the team, I really don't go process this a lot enough, but it's funny. Um, Freshman year of high school, you know, I, yeah. I came up here from New York. Oh, and okay. Freshman year of high school, I remember I had actually, I was getting ready to try out for the basketball team. And I had got my um my finger had gotten cut on the ice in the ice skating oh, no. rink, um you know the ice skating rink that was from right gym? up the top of the yeah, yeah yeah yeah, and you know so that happened right around trials for the ball team so I wasn't able to try I remember sitting in the yeah. um oh, the man. the tryouts being like man I'm mad I can't do this and then oh. you know I think that just opened up an opportunity for me to do track and field um you mm-hmm. know. Had I not got that kind of finger, I definitely, I think I would have been on the ball team. You know, I don't know about varsity, but first yeah, year, I definitely would have made it. What, what I do recall is with those weights on, you were grabbing the rim. <laughs> so I was like, I, I was grabbing the rim. Um, you know, I was, you know, I think high school, I, I was literally at the end of high school, I was dunking. Mm. You know, yeah. remember, you remember Lamont Oh my man, my team. Yes, yes, sir. He's over Lamont, in, man. He's still in Europe right now, right? Yeah, he's still playing professionally. Shout outs to him. Um, he's still playing professionally. But you know, when I was um, I was actually, yeah, I was able to. <laughs> Sorry, man. We had some connection issues there. Yeah, Lamont, Lamont, man. man. We were, you know, we were in gym class, and you know, mm-hmm. we, we, I go up, you know, I go up and like hit the hit the back of the rim when I was trying to dunk, and Mont was dunking. That's actually what happened. Get these weights. So I was like, I got to dunk, man. Yeah, Monty was just dunking with ease, you know. Let, let let me tell you my story about Monty. This was so. This was freshman year. I was six two. I'm six two now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was just. I got lucky. I just sprouted up real quick. I remember this, uh, right. freshman tryouts. That was the first time I met Monty, and he was like, he wasn't that tall at the time. Like he was like five ten, mm-hmm. right? But he mm-hmm. could jump already. You could tell that he had some coordination there that. I did not possess, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. But then, then sophomore year, he shows up and he's like six seven, <laughs> like oh shoot, now I'm still yeah, six two. <laughs> not up, but yeah, man. But he was, yeah, uh, had a lot of good good memories with Monty. He was just in addition to being a, a great basketball player, just like a really good guy. Like uh, it, something about that talent. Seeing that talent, but still seeing like there's a, there was a kindness to him. Like, sorry, Monty, don't want to ruin your rep or anything like that. But he he was a good friend from the team. Nah, he's so. a great guy, man. Monty, a great guy. That's that's a definite man. Monty, a great guy. Yes, still sir. doing good things. Yes, sir. So uh, we were in, we were in high school. We we didn't get to be on the basketball team together. That's unfortunate. Right. But we uh, we did become. Uh, Facebook friends, I've been watching your career this whole time, seeing you do all this cool stuff. You just brought brought out this new website here. I'm showing it on the screen. It's yes, awesome, man. man. I so right now I work in you know developing websites and stuff, and I saw this when you put it on uh, LinkedIn, like yeah. the scroll effects, everything. This is on point. You're selling your book right from the right from the website. Yeah, Dude, yeah. This is this is good stuff. So. Uh, shout out to your friend that made it. You, if you want to do the, the shout Vision, out. For Vision name. Entertainment, man. Vision Entertainment, man. At Vision ENT on IG. Um, Vision Entertainment, man. They they do fantastic work. As you can see, you know, mm-hmm. professional, 
Um, they do the branding aspect of it too. And I think that the branding aspect is so important. I think, you know, as you know, Zach, it's so important for a designer to be able to encapsulate what is, you know, what is your brand that you want to express, you know, yeah. Even one that kind of helped me identify the color, the color schemes and, and things of that nature. Oh, man. Um, the, the color is on point. Did, did you get yeah, that did suit you, just you, for the site? I had, I had that suit? blazer. I thrifted that blazer a long time ago, man. <laughs> it looks After good. I need five dollars I spent at the thrift store. That came in handy. <laughs> That's <laughs> perfect. That anymore, man, thrifting. But yeah, I thrifted that at the, um, you know, and I just, that blazer came in handy, you know, on Vision Fuel. Vision Fuel, man. Vision Fuel on IG, mm. man. That's the yeah. architect of my brand and my, my website, my, my redesign, my logo, all of that. Yeah, the great logo, too. Um, search engine optimization was there as soon as I typed in your name. First first result above even all the ads. I don't know how they did that. but <laughs> mm. That's 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 good work. <laughs> so shout out to Vision Entertainment. Y'all, y'all are doing good stuff. Uh, Frank, just so you know, I'm... I'm terrible at design like this. You see the background here? That's me. I'm just like kind of slapping stuff together. I'm, I'm actually like, I focus on the code side of stuff. I'm oh, gosh. Sort of functionality, the coding. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Got it. Got it. For the money. So I, got, I got all excited when I saw, you know, you could buy the, you could buy the book right from here and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suited for success, you know, volume mm -hmm. two. It's a, it's an anthology of, um, you know, 25 stories of 25 different educators, um, black male educators, CEOs, moguls, entertainers, entrepreneurs, you know, just about overcoming adversity with real tangible, you know, life lessons and strategies, man, just to deal with adversities of life, man. It's like 25 years of experience in one book. Man. Yeah. Shout, shout out to the book. If you're watching, go, go, let's, let's do some sales right here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the site. So there you go. Uh, that, that's a good um, that's a good segue into the first topic I wanted to talk about. What is success? So I got your accolades on the screen. Do you want do you want to run through them, Frank, or is that is that yeah, to, yeah, to the boasting? If you want me, hey, to, you, know. I, I, you know, you know, for me, man, I've learned it's not boasting if you've done it. Yeah, you know, you, you have to be able to if you put the work in to be who you are. You have to be able to stand on who you are. Claim that mantle. Yeah. You know, and for me, it's about, you know, because I never used to do that. But sometimes when you don't do that, you're going to undersell yourself and undercut yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, you you sacrificed to be who you are. Like everything that I've done has been a sacrifice. It's been mm -hmm. a stretch. It's been a growth area. So I'm at the point now where I don't mind listening to the things that I've done because they're really all they're doing is just like validating the path and the journey that I've chosen to take for my life, you know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some of my accolades, man. Um, one of probably my most significant accolades. I was chosen as um Black Enterprises Modern Man of the Year from the year of 2018. Mm -hmm. And you know, Black Men, the Black Enterprises, you know, the premier source, I would say, uh, one of the longest serving premier sources of entrepreneurship and business in the Black community, but in the business community in general, mm -hmm. right? Um, shout out to Earl Graves, the founder of Black, the Black Enterprise. Um. Shout out to Alfred Edmund Jr., the, um, the, 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 the managing VP um, over there, Black Enterprise, the editor. Um, just shout out to Black Enterprise, the whole network and what they're doing. Um, fantastic, innovative work. You know, I was chosen out of, you know, multiple amazing men doing work across the country that could have easily gotten this you know, accolade as well. And Black Enterprise had launched a campaign called the Modern Man Campaign, which, which was profiling Black men making impact in their communities culturally and professionally, you know. Um, so that was significant. Um, that happened in Florida. Uh, yeah. On I forgot it was in West Palm Beach, Florida. Man, it was beautiful, beautiful opportunity. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Had, then, how did you get involved with uh, Black Enterprise? So the work that I do with youth that I've done for years with with teenagers, with young people, um, youth engagement, youth development, community based work, focus work. Um, you know, work I've done in the school system, I've been blessed to be profiled by some, you know, some high profile entities and, and businesses and companies. And, you know, social media also, man, people show love online. They share your work. I share my, I share a lot of the victories and the challenges that I've had with youth over the years through my social media. I share my story, mm. my ups, my downs, um, share stories of helping young people, you know, and I believe they just got hold of it. Um, someone shared, someone thought, great enough to me to share my information with them and my story. 
And they profiled me originally just for, for their magazine as one of the modern men across the country. And then after a year, I went to their conference. And after a year, um, I had a conversation with Alfred Edmund Jr., which is senior, senior VP at Black Enterprise. And um, he really just sparked something in me, man, to mm-hmm. represent the brand um, and just take what I was doing to the next level. And thankfully, that conversation worked out because I definitely That's took awesome. what I was doing to the next level. I, I saw I saw a clip of you talking with the with the older gentleman um, about being modern man of the year. Is that is that the gentleman you you referencing? Oh no, that that is this amazing brother named. Um, I know what you're talking about with the tropical background and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, wait, no, no, that, no, no. This was this was an older gentleman in a suit. I believe he said it yeah, was Okay, suit. okay. Oh, it was interview style. That was probably my Black Enterprise interview. That was Alfred okay. Edmund Jr., man. Okay. Alfred, yeah, senior VP, man. Black Enterprise, man. Um, amazing, amazing man, man. He he is. He looks like he. he it, you won't believe his age if I told you. He keeps himself in amazing, incredible shape, man. Just a, an amazing individual. Awesome. Dude. Let, let me latch on to this topic that kind of this theme I kind of noted while you were talking about this. Just the theme of community building and lifting up inside of the community once it's established. Right. Like, I feel like, um, you know, going through your stuff, trying to research you for, for this conversation, I felt like that was kind of like a theme. It's like the, the older generation coming down, building up the community, finding you, building up your own community in, in New Haven, lifting you up. And then, you know, uh, you in turn, you know, kind of lifting down to the, to the, to the students in, in the high school and, and to, the, to the people you encounter and doing the same thing. Yes, that, sir. man, that seems so powerful. Can you, can you speak more on that? Yeah, you know, Zach, one thing that I'm, I'm clear on is that I feel like life is about what you pay for, not just what you receive, right? Actually, life is about what you what you do, with what you receive. And for me, yeah. what I receive is what I have to pay for. It's like it's a mandate. Like I have to give what it was given to me. And I was always taught to pass it, pass on the knowledge, the wisdom, opportunities on to the next generation. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, the cycle, the, the positive cycle will stop. You know when you do that. Um, so yeah, it, it the lessons I've learned, um, the experience I've been privy to. The opportunities I've had, you know, the blessing to to partake in are things that I've chosen to. How can I translate this to a newer generation that's influenced a lot differently than how I was and how we came up, man? Um, mm. You know, so that's what it's been about, man. We have to pay. The only way to pay back what someone's done for you is to pay it forward. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Do you, just last song to something you mentioned there, too. Do you, do you feel like the 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 generation coming after us um do you feel like they're coming into a different world now most definitely Mm. the generation coming after us man the world they're coming into is so different man like Mm. the world they're coming into is so different right now to the point where if you look at what they're experiencing and what like what they're walking into Mm -hmm. we didn't walk into the digital world when we were younger we were teenagers well, I, we had AOL. We had the beginnings, like the 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 the, the foundation. We had the CD media. ROMs with the we had the CD ROMs. Hours. <laughs> yeah, we had the CD ROMs and things of that nature. But we didn't we didn't have to come into the virtual world and everything being dictated by the virtual world, the trends, um, you know, what culture is, what culture looks like. Like we didn't have to come into that. Yeah, you know. Um, we yeah, as a as a father, issue. Frank, I'm just like um, our our one of our older children is 13 right now. He wants a phone, and I'm like, I want to give him a phone, <laughs> but I also just like I don't want his life to be ruined by that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, we had we had it good where we had the phones, but we were we didn't we weren't answering the phones like that, man. Mm-hmm. We 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 remember what it is to be outside. You know, the trendy thing yeah. is right now after COVID to be like we outside like. We got to be able to actually be outside, enjoy outside. It was a punishment for us to stay inside. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's, it's like hey, <laughs> now it's like the kids. Oh, we outside? I'm on my phone. I can mm-hmm. make. I can get the TikTok going. I can do all of that. Yeah. You know, 
Well, oh. there's there's two pieces of that too because you know I'm I'm in the field I'm in because I believe there's something powerful here too. I, I think it's getting misused right now. You know, I, I I do. I think that like things like TikTok, maybe TikTok is a bad example. That could potentially be a you know something for good. But right. The the ability we have here to to share knowledge, to share like look at us right now. You you're in. Uh, are you still in? New Haven right now? Yeah, I'm in New Haven. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Arizona. Look, <laughs> like, out of nowhere, we, we didn't even know each other that well in high school, and here we are, you yeah. know, having this having this conversation we would have never had if, if we lived in our parents' generation, I think. True, so, true, true. That's a fact. Yeah. So, so being able to being able to take sort of the riches and the fruits of our of our time, <laughs> figuring out how to traverse it so that you can avoid the pitfalls. That's like right. I, I feel it's like that's key. So, can we exactly. go to can we go to the definition of success from from your from your point of view? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one thing I want to just add before we go into what's the definition of success is that yeah, you know, social media is a tool for positive or for negative. Man, it's about who's using it and for what. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think it's about teaching young people just how to how to utilize it for the good, and how to manage it. You know, and manage the usage of it. You know, yeah. that that's what it is. The uses are um, the energies too. Like, yeah. Not to get too weird or spiritual or anything like that, but there's if you fill your mind with with toxic stuff, it's go, it's going to manifest. But yeah, that's then, that's spiritual, that's psychological, that's that's yeah. physiological. All of that is connected. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah. And when we talk about success, and what's, what was the question to me again, Zach? Yeah. To you, what is the definition of success? So what do you seek after when you're when you're talking about seek success? When you tell when you tell your students, you know, uh, to, to to go for success, what are what are you talking about? Is All right, that- so that's a good question, Zach. You know, when I tell my students to go for success, essentially what I'm saying to them is let me move this over a little quick. What I'm saying to the kids is when I tell the kids about success to go for it. Success starts, it's an inside out job, right? Um, Because you can be outwardly successful, but inwardly broken, right? So success success is... That's a huge theme right now, I feel like. That's a whole other thing in social media. But sorry, say more on that. that. Finally, it's a thing, right? It's it's trendy, man. It's Mm -hmm. totally trendy. But I teach them, man, you have... Success for you is, is being the best version of yourself. You have to build you from the inside out because whatever you are on the inside is going to come out on the outside. Mm-hmm. Like whatever, whoever you are is going to come out, right? It's kind of like when you're under pressure and you get squeezed, whatever's inside comes out. So if you, it's about inside out, what's your character? You know, um, what do you, what do you, what are your values? You know, um, how do you treat people? Cause you know, relationships is the new relationships are the new capital. That's the new money. Right, you build the right relationships, the money's gonna come to you. The opportunity. So, for me, it's about what do you build it inside that's gonna manifest itself on the outside of you. I like that. I like that. Um, so, so going for um, you know, now that we know what success is, I've, I've kind of you know gone through some of your clips. Um, one of the big things I've noticed, so we can go to find your wife here too, but. Um, uh, I think it, I think it's on your website here too. Let's see. I think it's at the bottom. You can disappoint yourself, but you can't disappoint the people that are counting on you. Yes, like, yes. So, uh, try trying to distill this down. Um, like the, the what what I read from that is you you're saying leverage the human connections that you have, turn them into turn them into a tool so that you can a, a tool for success. Is that is that how you think of it or? Well, I think I think I think of it a little differently. I think that's the interpretation, right? But I also think of it as, you know, when people are counting on you to do something great in your life, mm-hmm. um, people are looking up to you, man. And it's it's just a, I think it's a different type of motivation. Like, if I quit, I can quit on myself, right? Mm-hmm. And I might be okay with that. But if I quit and I know someone's watching me, am I okay with that? Because if I quit, they might quit too. If they see me quit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing for me, well, I'm, I'm suited up so much. We'll talk about that, like basketball. I was, I was in great shape in high school. <laughs> Man, as soon as I got off the team, though, that 
the the motivation to to work out really dropped off for me. Like to, to keep myself in shape, that right. was that was that was like clearly evident, right? So, right, that, right, that right, was right, one right. piece right there. One, one of the things I feel like I've had to learn is like how to leverage attention, how to leverage things, so that when no one else is watching, I'm, I'm doing it for me. <laughs> like kind of going back to what you were talking about with talking about your uh, accolades. Mm-hmm. A little bit. So, yeah. Do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, I say, you know, Zach, really, I think what it, what it comes down to, man, is the things we do when no one is watching are really what shapes us. Mm. You know, when some when people aren't sharing, when, when, you know, when we're not in a structured environment, right? Like, that's mm. what shapes us, man. You know, I know I was, a, I, I stopped running track in college and I was, you know, I was recruited for it. Um, and I definitely had that weight situation and everything like that. Um, and I had to kind of get myself back because I, I didn't have that structure around me anymore. And I didn't have the people watching me, you know, so it just, yeah, what we do when no one is watching is really the thing that shapes us um, and molds us, you know. And then I think it's also about how we maintain that momentum, you know. Mm-hmm. Say, say more you, on that. Say more on that. I tell young people all the time, man, you know. Do what you do for you regardless of what the reward is. Do what you do for you because the reward is you doing it for you. So whether that's being in shape mentally, whether that's staying in shape physically, right? Do it for you. Don't do it for someone else. Do it for you because when you do things for you, it hits different. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times our motivation is ex- extrinsic more than intrinsic, right? It's, yeah. it's on outside people. It's on outside relationships, outside opportunities. I'm doing, I'm getting myself in shape because I have that summer body, you know, so I can go to the beach and boom, boom, boom to show yeah. it off. And that's yeah. cool, but summer's going to leave and then winter going to come back around, yeah. right? And once, once, and I know this, right? Because I've experienced this. Once you get past the event that you're doing it for, what is going to keep you doing it? You know what I'm saying? I've been in shape for the summer and it fell off in the winter before. But when I say I need to do this because it's a lifestyle, mm-hmm. it's a promise I want to make to me, yeah. it hits different. Have you ever read um, Atomic Habits by any chance? I haven't. Okay. So so there, there's there's a piece, um, there's like a little piece of advice in there uh, that uh, what you said just reminded me of, which was, um, he was talking about, uh, the author was talking about smokers, actually. People, mm-hmm. people trying to quit smoking. Mm-hmm. And um, they they did some study on this, and they found out that if they asked, if they offered someone a smoke, um, it was like the the way they responded to this was like telling of whether they they would actually be successful in quitting or not. Okay. And if they said um, if they said um, uh, no, I'm not a smoker, then they would be successful. But if they mm-hmm. said no, I'm trying to quit. They, they would fall back into it because of it was who they are. It was who they were in their mind. If they were still a smoker who was trying to quit, they're going to go back to being a smoker. If they're not right. a smoker anymore, they that that was it. Like That was the indication for success. Does that make sense? Mm. It's mentality. It's, it's internalizing. It's, it's setting yeah. your identity, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Sorry, take sorry. Sorry. No, no, you, you cool. We take for granted, Zach, the power of what we say, you know, or what we declare over ourselves. It's easy to take that for granted. Like, literally the things that we say can influence our lives. Words are powerful on a physical, on a physiological, cellular level. What we say to ourselves matters and it counts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it is, it, 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 it's a serious thing. Yeah. So, when we set our intentions to make things happen in our lives, goals, things of that nature, what we say when we're going in the process of achieving what we want and what we say when we're launching it is so important. And what we say to ourselves, you know? Mm. Yeah. You had a smoker that had two different that had two different outcomes based on two different, you know, saying um um um, um affirmations or or, or or statements. Yeah. You know? Again, yep. it's about what how, what you the perspective, what you say, the energy behind it. I mean, yeah. Well, it's, it's like you silly. said. It's like you said. It's what's inside comes out when you get squeezed, right? Like the, yeah. those two people had different 
different mindsets of who they were. And it came out mm-hmm. when they got squeezed, when they got offered that smoke. And that mm-hmm. was that was it. That was like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly like you said. So mm-hmm. 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 there you go. Uh, so with with COVID um, hitting a couple years back, I was uh, we had just had our our youngest daughter when um, when COVID happened. She was born in in March, and we were. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was that was kind of an interesting thing. We were like, you know, all of our other pregnancies, we've had all the family in with us, and it's been a big thing. And this pregnancy was just me and my wife, and, and then the baby when when she came. Mm-hmm. But um, I was I was at my heaviest right then, and mm-hmm. I needed to make a decision. And, and this is maybe bringing both of these two halves together. It's just like, yeah, I had to make a decision of who I was, but mm-hmm. I also. I had I just had a new life I brought into this world that I was responsible mm. for, and yeah. I wanted to make sure I was here for that for that life as long mm. as I could. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Zach, I, that that I think as men, you know this, and this is Men's Health Awareness Month. We in November right now. Oh, it's yeah. National Men's Health Awareness Month right now, right? And you know, with that being said, I'm very clear that. COVID and the effects of COVID on our physical health or real, on our mental health, emotional health, you know, we're not meant to live in isolation or, just, or have our lives upended like that. You yeah. know, so you 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 show you, you kind of validated a statement that we read on my website earlier too. Um, you can disappoint yourself, but you can't disappoint those looking up to you. Like you said, look, yeah. I gotta be here for my kids, right? I'm sure you made you could have made a different decision if it was just about Zach. Oh, but I can go into uh, all those kinds of stuff. Like before, before I had kids, before that was on the table, I was I was content to work like minimum wage job, and then mm-hmm. like that came up, and I was like, now time to, time to figure something out. But yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting you again. Say, say more. Zach, it's about. it's it's really about man. Again, you could. You could have made an entirely different decision if it was just about you. But because it wasn't just about you, because you had something to fight for, you made it's something that you you made a change for yourself that was because you had something worth fighting for. Yeah. And you wanted something, you wanted to be around for your child, yeah. for your children. That's Speaking a very which, real thing. Speaking of which, I have a little one right here. Hey, <laughs> bring so him in. It's okay, it's all cool. I love when kids crash the interviews, man. It's fun. Okay, look, look, give me just a second, Frank. I'm sorry. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, my wife's done. Poor guy. <laughs> sorry, man. She came running in. I, I, I missed a little bit of what she said. Could you, could you repeat that last that last sentiment? I'm sorry. It's fun when kids crash the interviews, man. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm, we, we, we be so that, That's now. my why right there. It's like, <laughs> that's that's mm-hmm. the people I count me on. Yep. You gotta let you know life happens, man. We be so perfect and so put together. Let I life happen. I you know, know, but we let life happen. Kids come in. Kids want to see what's going on. Yes, sir. They watching daddy on technology right now. Mm. You know, that's a seed. Oh, hey, I can remember when I was three or four, my dad would be on the computer interviewing these dope, amazing people. Maybe I want to become a media person down the line or something. Those yeah. early childhood experiences are very necessary. I love it. I appreciate it. Yeah. All, all the same, though, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't catch where you were going with your last thought. If you, if you want to keep going with it, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no problem. No problem, man. Um, really, to to bring it back to what we were saying, man. Again, this is Men's Health Awareness Month, man. Yeah. And as men, we have to be more. And I know because I've had health challenges, right? We have to be so aware of our health, mentally, emotionally, physically, especially physically, because man, we don't tend to go to the doctors unless something is wrong. Yes, right. We don't make yes. we don't we don't tend to make changes in our lives until something is wrong. So we're not. Oh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't we don't plan for the issues, but we react to the issues when they come. We're, we're right? being reactive, not proactive. With it, there we go, Zach. That's it. We reactive rather than proactive man and it's like man physically we have to be so on guard some yeah. of us got uh predisposed genetically to diabetes to high blood pressure um to heart disease right if we don't know what's in our, our blood work and our, our workups 
um, what, what's in our genetics, you know, it's like, hey, if, if I'm predisposed to one thing, I might want to start to cut back on the sugar a little bit so I don't trigger something that's already in my blood. You know what I'm saying? Or already in my gene pool. Somebody might not have that issue, you know, but if I don't know, then I, I have to I have to make a change ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I have to know my know my statuses, right? Yeah. Know what's in my genes, know what's in my genetics, um, and then start to adjust, man, because you don't want to have to be forced to make an adjustment in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Be take get, getting ahead of that of that doctor's visit by having a doctor's visit beforehand. That's mm-hmm. that's something I've been trying to figure out. <laughs> and yeah, for for me too, Frank, just like with um with, with some of the coding stuff I do, a lot of it's pretty uh, you know, it, it you you've gotta stay in, in physical shape so that you can stay in yeah. mental shape. It's just yeah it's just the way it is. Like um before uh when I first got started in my career too I was really struggling. And I didn't even know I was struggling. I had uh, sleep apnea, so like snoring. Oh, yeah. And finally, my wife got me. <laughs> she, I'm keeping her up every night, but she finally got me to go see the sleep therapist and got yep. me on um, the, the CPAP machine. Yep, yep. And man, that changed my life. <laughs> like, I didn't even know I was missing out on, on like sleep. And they were telling me, um, like, my oxygen level was dropping like 50%. And mm-hmm. I, was, I was struggling at work at the time. I was like, I wonder if that's what <laughs> it turns out as soon as I, as soon as I made that fix, like new worlds opened up, new possibilities opened up. And that yeah, was, man. That, that was a big thing. So, you address that health piece, man. It's, it's real. Man. Yeah. You know, with sleep apnea, man, you stop breathing when you're sleeping at point points, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, my wife was me. saying like, there were times she thought I was, I was tired. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. Cool to you. Yeah. Well, the, uh, go, going back to like success, like these were all like talking about tools to, to get there, leveraging your physical health, leveraging mm-hmm. the, the connections around you. I think what big part of it too is is uh, these two pieces we haven't really touched on yet, finding your why and emotional intelligence. I think these are right. two tools for success mm-hmm. that, you know, I was, I was refreshed when I saw you mention these in your, uh, you know, in your content. Because like these are these are two of the bigger pieces I think to make right. sure like you have the fuel to to go after this right facts so, that's a fact yeah. do, um, do, you, do you want um, would it be too much to ask you to share the the story that you mentioned about your your brother for finding your oh uh, no not not at all not at all man um when it comes to finding my why man um a couple of years ago I had to tell I spent ten years working in New Haven Public High School system. And a couple of years ago, upon exiting in the system, I was asked to speak to the senior class at um, Wilbur Cross High School. And I shared a story about my brother. Um, wasn't my blood brother, but he was family. And I believe that friends with a family you choose, right? Mm-hmm. And his name was Henry Green. And Henry Green was just an amazing individual. He was a youth advocate, um, an artist just a prolific, life-changing individual. And Henry in 2010, I believe, was shot on the way home from high school. And he almost died. And he miraculously, by the, you know, by, I'd say by the grace of God, he, he made it through being shot, but he would go into a struggle to replace, I believe it was a small intestine, because that was blown out close range. And for years, you know, he fought to stay alive. And he passed in 2018, I believe in August. And he spent the time he had left on this earth making people's lives better, speaking in, you know, in in, in prisons, schools, churches, community centers, homeless centers, um, mentoring young people. You know, just being a gift to this world, man, and that that's, became that's a powerful perspective. Yeah, that became part of my why, man. Um, that became part of my why because I feel like part of my my why is to keep that legacy of of of, of what he was doing alive. Mm-hmm. You know, through the work that I do in this world, man. So 
if, like I said in my speech, I said, if I fail, I'm going to disappoint this person, yeah. right? If I yeah. fail in, in not doing this, I'm dishonoring his memory. That's how I take it. That's my why. I got to honor his memory. Yeah. And, and then uh, going to uh, emotional intelligence as well. Just um, for, so, so this is one of the things, you know, when I reached out to you, I said, I, I, I think there's a lot of, um, a lot that people in my domain can learn from, from your perspective. I think mm-hmm. this is one of the biggest ones. Um, we, we get a big head over here, like like my domain, like coding. Mm-hmm. Like we know we know how to do the math. We know how to we know how to do the architecture, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think we we um, we often fall down a little bit on this piece, which is such a huge part of like try, trying to build success, or trying to build a product too. Just trying yep. to build value, like um, yep. you know, yeah, I don't want to don't want to call him out, but like oh. Shoot, what's the guy's what's the guy's name who runs Facebook? Zuckerberg. I, yeah, I was gonna say Metaverse. Metaverse. <laughs> yeah, like that's so. I I'm still not really sure what it is. To be honest, mm-hmm. so I'm like <laughs> I gotta mm-hmm. get into Web three and figure out what all that stuff's about. But there is like clearly huge technological accomplishment. But do we have the most emotional intelligence as especially in our domain? Like, do we have that? But also as a society, like, are we are we getting there? Do you think we're trending in a good place? Let's let's ask. Yes that. and no. Yes yeah. and no. Um, it's it's a double edged sword for me, because really, Zach, if you think about it, we're becoming more emotionally aware, and and unfortunately, COVID has has helped with that because we're becoming more in tune with ourselves. But at the same time, it's it's, it's hard to answer because while we become more emotionally aware and and and, and intelligent. We're also social media and just the digital age and era that we're in. It's not the best for people for mental health, unregulated. When I mean unregulated, unmanaged. I mean, the virtual world pulls you in so deeply. Social media pulls us in so deeply, and you know how it is, man. You know, from a programming standpoint and everything like that. Algorithms are designed to trigger based on behaviors and reactions and identify certain themes right um i go on i go on a social website and i like a certain picture a couple of times it's going to show up more on my feed it's yeah. behaviorally it's a behavioral software right yeah. well, um, it's, it's it is the the way the way i the way i look at it man is we, we found this like amazing tool and we, we figured out a way to to use it to sell ads like that's that's what we've done with it we we yeah. we, we, we We've created a dashboard for for like monitoring and influencing human behavior, and we gave it up to the highest bidder. Exactly, it's, and it's, influence behavior. Exactly. Yeah. As and because we don't have this, because we're not where we need to be here as a society mm-hmm. and as as an industry or on 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 the the tech side of things, it's like there could be some. I think there could be some disastrous things that come out of that. Yeah, in, in general, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. In, in general, I'm optimistic, but there's a lot of dangers here. It's going to take a tight walk to to get through. Exactly. We've been seeing movies on this stuff. Exactly. We've been seeing movies on this stuff for years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've been seeing movies on what this would. I feel like I'm yeah. watching a movie unfold right now. Like yeah. we've been seeing movies on this stuff for years. Um, and I think you know from from something you brought up earlier, man. Like, and without fully knowing the nuances of your industry. I can say from what I do know, man, like so emotional intelligence has around, I think, four to five facets, right? Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, problem solving, and relationship building, right? Yeah. Can, can you go through those one more time for me so I make sure I catch you? Self-awareness, self-awareness yeah. self-management, self-management is the next one, mm-hmm. social awareness, problem solving, And relationship building or management, okay. one of the two, right? Yeah. So you think about it, right? Like from what I've seen in, in just in tech in general, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be self-aware because when you you know yourself, when you know yourself, you know how you, you interact with others. 
you know how you know how your body interacts, your mind, what motivates you, what demotivates you, what impacts you, and just from a productivity standpoint, you know how to turn your keys to get the best out of yourself, right? That increases that that leads to a, a higher degree of work. Yeah, and then you know there's a saying? whole there's a whole you know aspect of honing in on this, like iterating on this, getting better at this every day. That's 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 a lot of what I love about this job too. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. this ability for for self improvement, and, exactly. and so these these are the kinds of things I think um, every software engineer out there that's watching this is going to resonate with this immediately. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Think about it. You're you're creating the personality of a framework. You know what I'm saying? Say more on that. So when I think about coding, coding is like a, creating a personality, right? Mm. A system that interacts, right? Yeah. That r- interacts based on certain commands, right? Based on certain actions. If I do A, I'm, co- I'm programming something to do A, and then C, B, and D is going to happen, right? Right, right, right. So that's, that's creating a personality. That's creating a, a set of behaviors, mm. right? Yeah. So the more self-aware you are, the more you, you know, what what is behind your programming, right? What is behind the why of your programming? What's the purpose behind it? Are you conscious of it? Because then we go into ethics, right? And everything like that. How does that influence your program? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, it's a powerful creative force. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it is. Mm-hmm. And coding, man, is, is powerful. Look, I can I can even get base level and go back to when we was in high school and we had MySpace pages. That was my first experience with coding. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, hey, that's that's essentially what I do. <laughs> I mean, like, that was my first experience with coding, man. And yeah. I can create the personality of my page and how I want it to be represented to the world. Yeah. If I have a coding that's off, you're gonna see the numbers on the page when there shouldn't be any numbers. It should mm-hmm. be images. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it's a lot of powerful creative control, man. So it's an expression of self awareness too, if you think about it, and yeah. self management, right? And then social awareness, because you have to be a, you're creating a code that's gonna solve an issue, address a problem, or create mm-hmm. a functionality, right? Yeah. yeah, this is something I think a lot about, Frank, because I, you know, at, at my dream, like my my dream, my why is I want I don't even know what I want to build. <laughs> But mm-hmm. I want to I want to have a team of like five engineers that that I lead, and because mm-hmm. I know I like that, I know I'm good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, I and it's, it's like it's in some ways that's kind of nice. Like I know what I want to do. I got to figure out what I want to build, and I think starting there might be might be better than what what normally happens. I feel like normally what happens is um, you know we find a way of making money instead of creating value, and. That's it. Trying to put those around and know, like, you can cheat the system, right? Like, you can cheat the system and you can make money without making the value. And, but, but that's, you're going to catch, things are going to catch up either to you or to the people you build it for or to someone who didn't even deserve it. Like, that's, that's, that's where it goes at the end of the day versus if you actually build something with value, but I'm convinced the money will come. Right. You said something key. It will catch mm-hmm. up to you, the people you build it for, or someone that didn't deserve it, right? That in itself is social awareness because you're just, you're aware of just not the impact on yourself, but who you're the, the target demographic or the audience you're working with. Also, the collateral damage that could be that could happen, you know. So no, that's social awareness right there, man. Yeah. So key piece of that was like well, Facebook. <laughs> they built up. They built up their stuff. They uh, like I said, they kind of gave they gave a, a dashboard for people to influence human behavior and gave, yep. gave it up to, to people to like to the highest bidder to, to say to pull those triggers. And oh. I don't know, depend depends on like where you go with the you know politically and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. there's a good chance like the the just the, that that fact may have affected like our elections, may have affected mm-hmm. the course of our nation. It's yeah. That's that's a huge externality for for people making some money. So I don't know. I, yeah, man, it's you put the tools. You have a tool that anyone can use. Mm-hmm. And last thing I say about this too. Yeah. If we look at so the FCC regulates mm-hmm. media, right? On television, right? Okay. Um, they regulate the media, 
But yeah, I'm out of my I'm out of my element, Frank. But I, know. I trust you. <laughs> but the yeah, FCC, the FCC, they they regulate. Yeah, yeah. So they're the people that say like you can't swear. Is that? Well, yeah, regulatory. They they create okay. the regulations. FCC, right? Okay. And so if you look at this, just literally, and this is one of the the, the positives and negatives, right? It's a double edged sword of social media. F- social media is deregulated, essentially. Yeah. Right, like there's no FCC. Like, yeah, there's no FCC that 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 regulates social media. Like you might happens. have a certain overarching set of regulations, but nah, the FCC, man, they regulate media, television, things of that nature. But you know, the Federal Communications Commission, right? But there's no Federal Communications Commission for social media like that. Yeah, everybody has a channel. Everybody can have a platform. It's like I look at social media like this. You have a master remote, which is your phone, right? Yeah. Or your computer. And yeah. you can change the channel hundreds of millions of times mm-hmm. to different programming at all times. TV that never stops. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking about like how much how much video content gets uploaded to YouTube. <laughs> it's just like and compare that, like even when you know, even when we were kids, it was like You'd have I didn't have this, but you you have the friends who have like the hundreds of channels at their house. It's yeah. like who in the world has like actually watched a hundred channels? Who's actually watching that? But now like now we have millions of, of YouTube channels and millions, millions of hours. Millions. Yeah. Uploaded are, every day. People it's, are making movies on YouTube now. Like yeah. like like it's again, it's just in all types of stuff, man. Yeah, you know, no, like you said, a double edged sword. That that could be really good. That could be really mm-hmm. great if yeah. if we had this all in place. I think yeah, that exactly. that could be like the the riches of our age is that the the cell phone, the one on the same cell phone. I'm scared to get my our 13 year old. Yeah, it's like that's that's a portal that they can use to like unlock any kind of any kind of uh, educational piece, any, anything they want to and... build, anything they want to learn. It's right there at their fingertips in their Literally. pocket. You know. Yeah, those supercomputers we got. Yeah, yeah. You think about <laughs> what what could NASA have done with this? What, what was it like, nineteen seventy nine when they Seriously. when they went to the moon? <laughs> they Seriously. had like calculators. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it's nuts. It's mm-hmm. nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go, going on the problem solving. That's I mean this is a big one for um, for, uh, for for my industry. It's like um, maybe we touched on this already. Like you could build, you could build something beautiful from a software engineering perspective, but if you're not solving the right problem, or if you're, if you're not, yep. yeah, it's it's worthless, worthless product. So. Yo, it, it it is, man. If you look at really, you know, problem, I call it problem solving, right? Um, and again, social, like 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 emotional intelligence has so, folks will, it's kind of like plug and play. Folks will sometimes plug and play different components or, or, or of emotional intelligence. Some folks will say, hey, we got the motivation in there. Some folks will say, you know, empathy is social skills. But, you know, from how I was taught it, it's definitely about, you know, problem solving. And the thing with problem solving is you have to have social awareness. All, see, all these things complement off of each other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. have to have social awareness to help to identify what the problem is. You have to have self-awareness to see how the problem intersects with who you are and your experience. You have to have self-management to understand how will, how how am I, how am I regulating myself when dealing with this problem, right? Um, you know, and and you have to have relationships to be like you have to bring in the right folks to address the problem. Right. You have to be able to bring in the right teams to tackle the problem. You have to have the right chemistry. You have to understand. Who who is on your team? What are their capacities? Yeah. And you only get that through relationships, right? Right. And the, like we, we were just having this this uh, very similar conversation last week with uh, Yusuf and Hicham. These are these are two master uh, software engineers. I had the pleasure of talking with last week. But nice, nice. Talking about so so they work at a, a larger enterprise company, mm-hmm. and uh, talking about how how like this piece is so key to, to a lot of what they do. It's like this, you could have you could have like an engineer who's brilliant, who's, who's really good in isolation, but yeah. if it doesn't help the team produce, if or if, if they're you're misaligned, if you're going towards a different direction, it's like 
It could it could be a negative to have mm-hmm. to have really good engineers there. Yeah. So and everybody needs community, man. Everybody, people. Some people can work in isolation and they do that, but isolation isn't good for the human psyche. Um, collaboration is what moves the world forward, essentially, right? You know, yeah. and I would I would venture, even though you know coding is not my industry, but I can understand it just from a programmatic like level, right? You know, in, in, in a behavioral level, you know, innovation is born through collaboration. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. from what I've seen, with, especially with coders, man, like folks that work in that coding space, folks will create code and another person will come and in, 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 what's name? improve on that code yes. Yes. by creating other strands and things of that nature. Yeah. Right? One of the things, Frank, that gives me hope is is the, the emergence of open source software. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple a couple weeks back, we had uh, Ben Lush on on the show. He's, he runs this package called ArcsJS, but millions of downloads every week. I think, mm. I think like hundreds of millions of downloads every week. Wow. I'd, I'd have to check, but um, but yeah, like th- and, and this is this is essentially um, like th- th- there's some other people who contribute to it as well. But he's he's running a lot of this stuff in, in his free time, <laughs> like from from the goodness of his heart almost. In the, wow. Like it's out there, and people can see that and come in and contribute to it and and help build up some stuff. And, and it's all it's all out there for free. Like mm-hmm. these enterprise companies are taking, uh, you know, taking those packages, using that in their products, and uh, some of them, you know, come back and contribute back to it and make it better. There, right, there's right, there's right. something there that's like, and, you know, this is all going back to that to that piece of like the the age we're in. There's those are the things that make that make me uh, optimistic about about the state we're in, even though there's a lot of those dangers. But yeah, like going back to what you were saying, though, um, like the, my fav- the the reason I want to go to that group of five developers is because when you're in the right scenario where you have that trust and that that relationship there, you have this thing where you know software engineers love these things, improving themselves and. Mm-hmm. If you can get to the point where you love sharing those improvements too, you get to this this really interesting thing that happens where you know I have an idea or I just learned something. I share that to the group. That sparks something for someone in that group where they go on and they they it, it builds a cycle. It builds a self sustaining system. You know what I'm saying? So. Exactly. It's influence too, right? Mm. You, you 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 like you know, innovation is influential. I always say that, right? Innovation is influ- innovation is influential. Mm-hmm. Say more. So when you create something that's innovative, it influences others to tap into their own innovation. It's kind of like a building block, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you can yeah. think about think about how many social networks spawned off of Facebook, right? Yeah. Or how much how much Zuckerberg influenced the the social media and changed landscape, right? There's a whole lot of different apps now um networks they're constantly popping up i mean innovation the innovation even uh, so it's, it's interesting right i look at how boom facebook came along boom 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 twitter instagram before instagram right vine videos all of that vine now influenced instagram started getting videos now Instagram took that video space, right? Snap came along. The Instagram took that piece. Snap right now, innovation, 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 yeah. right? Um, and each is building on the next mm-hmm. and being sparked, right? That's that's one example, man. Innovation is influential. And then the other thing is, you just never know who is going to be the next Steve Jobs, right? Someone mm-hmm. can inspire the next Steve Jobs just based off of you know, one innovation, yeah. one action can, Tupac Shakur said it best, right? I may not change the world, but I will spark the mind that's going to change the world, right? Mm. And we just never know who are we sparking, right? Yeah. Who are we sparking? Sparks come from everywhere and every person. Some of these, some of the greatest folks in history will, will recall back to moments in their childhoods with folks that might be obscure in history, but they had a hand in sparking someone that did something great, mm-hmm. right? Innovation, 
Innovation comes in different sizes, forms, industries, moments, right? But it's all about tapping into the creativity of the human spirit and us expressing that because you just never know how it's going to spark somebody. Yeah, I feel you. Hey, um, how are you doing on time? Do you have a hard stop here? Nah, I'm flexible. All right, can we, can we talk? I want to I want to go from that to to up to, to to this topic right here, being a hope dealer. This, yeah, this yeah. Was, so so when I when I first reached out to you, I I saw on your I think you've used this this kind of moniker for a while, the hope dealer, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I think I've seen that for a while. But as soon as uh, when I when I got the idea to have you on the show, like this is this was the big thing that like reached out to me, and it, uh, when I sent you that graphic there, <laughs> like that was. Yeah, that, that was that's such a cool. I think there's so much power in that too, man. Just mm-hmm. just the way the way you present it. But how how do we how do we get to this? Like how do how do uh how how do we get to be in a hope dealer for our communities? How how do we get to like um you know taking so the the brilliance of this this line right is is just to just to spell it out like the dope dealer kind of pun. Like, yeah. Yes. That's that's kind of what we're talking about. It's like it's it's this thing that's addictive and it can take hold of your life, but it's it's this it's this negative influence. Mm-hmm, but taking mm-hmm. that and turning it into a positive thing, so it's just as addictive, just as like just as as much power to take over your life, but to have a positive influence on it. Exactly. Yeah. Zach, it's really about so the way I look at it like this. I'm very big on counter culture, right? Meaning counter, uh, on, on what? counter counter culture, okay. counter culture, right? Mm-hmm. So when I say counter culture, it really is like transformation, right? It's the power. How do you transform something? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, well, how do you transform something from negative to positive, right? Because I think a lot of times in in the culture that we're in in society, I look at society as a stream, right, or a river. And it takes a lot of work to change the direction of the freaking river. Yeah. It takes a, it's almost like you got to do a lot. So yeah. I don't have to change the direction if I just start to change the, 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 the stream, right? Mm. So now I could change the stream. So it's going just straight, 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 straight. I could divert it a little bit, right? And shift the direction. I can't change the direction and saying, we're going to change this from, from going downwards to upwards. And you're just not going to, this is a lot to do that, right? Yeah. That's an overtime thing. But on, on the interim, right, I, I could iterate and say, all right, I'm going to take these couple of boulders real quick. Yeah. And I know the water's going here and it's going to come off the cliff to the waterfall. But guess what? I'm going to take these rocks and put them in place to shift the, the direction and create another stream, mm-hmm. right? And then we could divert that stream. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And make an impact and divert that stream. So that's what, for me, being a hope dealer is about. Is like, look, let me change the stream, right? The direction of where the stream was going. Because I can't change it entirely, but I could shift it. And then we could do something else with this stream that's not going in the same direction of the whole freaking river. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm really big on, you know, analogies, right? And for me, being a hope dealer is about shifting it from, from dope to hope, right? Yeah. Um, something that's recognizable for destruction, but using it as a, as a tool to help people, to impact people in a positive way. Um, that was born out of a friend of mine um, that was like a mentor of mine named Influence. He's a poet. And he made a poem called The Poetry Dealer, which was literally like selling poetry like drugs. And it had an impact on me just to see him talk about that at an early age. I was a teenager at the time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that was that kind of planted the seeds for this whole concept of what a hope dealer is, mm-hmm. you know. So it's a shift, it's a transformation, it's whatever was like doing bad. We can change it for good, right? Um, it's about the pill and the applesauce, you know. We can get the medicine, we just got to change the way it's delivered, you know. Yeah. Changes on the inside, what's on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, well. Let me go here with this, Frank. Um, when I when I started into this industry, I, I went back to school. Um, I, I had a degree actually in um, in theology, but I, when I decided, you know, time to, time to make some money, I got I got people to 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 take care of. Um, went back to college to to study computer science. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Clemson University for that in, nice, uh, in nice. South Carolina. 
And um, there were several of my classmates that, so I, I was older than most of these uh, these younger people uh, going mm-hmm. to school for computer science, but we had several um, several students uh, commit suicide uh, mm. either, either while they were at school, while they were in the computer science department, or, or shortly after wow. they graduated. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough thing uh, for me because, like, coming into this, you know, and we can we can pop back up the stack to like, you know, find your why. Like, I had my why at this point. I, I knew I had I had people I needed to need to be responsible for. I had I had a reason to be around. Right. Um. I think you know a lot of your content that I've seen speaks to like this necessity of of, of the circumstances of the of the young people you talk with. Um, mm-hmm. Versus, you know, uh, in in computer science, I feel like, you know, the salaries are really high. There's a lot of things going pretty easy. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wonder if there's something there too. Just, you know, th- this is one of the things I, th- I think about a lot. Given, you know, the suicides um, that that it was, it was like I think it was three three people within the mm-hmm. course of the year that um, that that I had classes with. So it was, mm-hmm. and one of them had just like got started a job at Google. And that's that's wow. not easy to do. That's like a that's like a big deal. You know? Right, right. And to see that, to see like that level of success popping up to this, but to then to see there's there's something like you were saying, there's something hollow there. Where mm-hmm. They didn't have this. They didn't have that hope. They didn't have mm-hmm. that why. They didn't have something, and they mm-hmm. decided to just throw it out. So I don't know, man. Um, do you have any insights there? Yeah. Um, you know, pe- mental health, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mental health is, it, it's, it's, been, it's become something that has become a hot button topic, especially since COVID has happened, right? But the other thing, Zach, is when we look at why people take their lives, it's for a myriad of reasons, but it's a last resort. Some people are in so much pain that they feel like, okay, I've exhausted everything else. I don't think I'm hurt. Um, I don't I don't know what I have to fight for, to live for, right? I don't have anything that's keeping me from like hopping over that proverbial ledge, mm-hmm. right? Or I cannot get past this pain. I mean, depression, anxiety, like extreme anxiety, depression are very draining and detrimental, you know, mind states, chemical states mental states, emotional states, they're, they're very draining. And for some folks, it's hard to get up out the bed. You know what I'm saying? So imagine trying to be functional. For some folks that are really dealing with things that are fun- and trying to function like that is difficult, yeah. you know? And when you, type, when, you, you, when you add in early childhood issues that manifest themselves in our adulthood a lot of times, and then you also add in just the pressure of life to be successful, to succeed. Everyone handles pressure differently. You know, there's not a one size fits all for every how everyone's equipped to handle pressure of life. It's not. Everybody, the same thing can happen to me and you and, and it could derail me, but empower you, right? Yeah. Same situation, same issue could derail me, but it can empower you, yeah. right? There's so many factors when it comes to what we, how we respond to life. Yeah. And I think what's lacking in our society is empathy, like mm-hmm. extreme empathy, not sympathy, because people get it twisted a lot of times. You see, empathy is sympathy with a backbone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We have to be empathetic to what people are going through. We have yeah. to be able to imagine a society where the question of how are you de- doing was an honest question that was honestly answered. I- you know what I'm saying? You you imagine that. You resonated so hard right now. For, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I a lot of what I want to do, like well, a lot of the person I want to be is someone who asks that question. It actually means mm-hmm. it. Like actually it genuinely means it and wants to, you know, genuinely hear um, that kind of stuff. Because like, so many people struggle with answering that question honestly because one, yeah. it's like, does the person care? Two, I'm afraid to look won't be vulnerable, right? Yeah. But I just imagine if a society where that question was answered honestly and received honestly, 
you know, um, because again, man, people, people, people check out of this world because they feel like my perspective, this is, and, and the other thing is from my perspective, it's trauma does it too, man. Trauma is a mother. Trauma mm-hmm. does it too, man. And, and, and has different effects on us. And some folks just can't deal with it. Yeah. It's too heavy. It's too much of a burden. So we, 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 we grow up. The human experience is so multifaceted. But when we grow up, we all go through different things, problems, issues. We're all on the spectrum of trauma. It hits us differently. We have different experiences. It hits different people differently, right? Mm-hmm. But the main and the grounding points all this exact is it hits folks differently. We respond to it differently. Yeah. And based on someone's mental, emotional makeup, where they are, some people are on the edge and someone pushes them over the edge. And they can't come back mentally, you know, yeah. um, and they check out because that's the only way that they can let the pain alleviate the pain. Yeah. Or some folks are not being heard and, and not being understood. Some folks are not being listened to. Right. Some folks are in so much pain. They don't know how to put it into words and articulate it. Some folks are under the stigma that they can't talk about their mental health issues because they're going to be talked about. Yeah. So they hold it in and they. And whatever you hold in doesn't do anything to you, man. You can't reveal what you don't hear. You yeah. can't hear what you don't reveal, right? Yeah. You can't you can't address what you suppress. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, so yeah. those are the reasons. Is, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Keep keep going, Fred. I'm sorry. Those are the but Zach. Those are the reasons, man. I'm very I'm very. You can tell I'm very passionate about this. Yeah. Point. No, I, I can I feel that. And those are the reasons. Hard man. with me right now, Frank. There's um, there's there's one thing I want to get in there though. It's like the wit. That, keeping that in, right? Keeping that in, that's that's hurting you. That's also hurting the the larger group, the larger mm-hmm. society too. Because mm-hmm. if we, if you, if you have this, if you have the emotional intelligence. And I don't, I don't want to cheapen in any way, you know, uh, mental illness. I think that's real, one hundred percent real. I, I yeah. don't want to cheapen it. I don't want to say it's it's like, you, you know, you can you can just make yourself better or anything like that. So mm-hmm. don't misunderstand the don't misunderstand the point. But if I can, if I can, it. If I hear if if I hear from you, you know, you, you said, "Hey, I, I'm struggling with this thing," and, and you're honest about it, you're real with it. But like you said, you know, what what could uh, what could really throw throw me like you, you're able to handle somehow. But if I have this emotional intelligence, that empathy, that self awareness, the self management, all those things in place, so I can hear from your experience. That's that's something I can use to build up myself, so that when when I hear your experience, that when when I when I benefit from those things you share, I can use that to, to build myself up. So it's like it's like that that empathy. That's that's not always like sometimes that's a selfish thing. You know what I'm saying? It's good for me and you. Yeah, like, exactly. I feel, I'm a better person. Look, if I'm a better person, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have better interactions. Right. And Help, if that communication I'm, I'm for me, is I'm there, I'm for you. Yeah, yeah. And if that communication's there so we can interface on those things. So I can I can get, hey, I had this and this worked, this didn't. Those kinds of things. Like that and we can put that out into the world. Like that's what that's what I want to do with this, you know, with the with the podcast. It's like mm-hmm. put that out there so people can so people can build up themselves and we get more people in, we get more perspectives in, we, we right. build this society together. And using this the tools like the Fruits of our age, the internet, and that kind of stuff. Exactly. That's, yeah. Man. <laughs> it's cool. It's not the car. It's who's behind the wheel driving the car that counts. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless you got AI driving that thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then you're a passenger. Hey. Yeah. Then, hey. Then, Zach, let's bring it full circle. If it's mm-hmm. AI, I just hope the programmers did a great job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. 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 Uh, but let me go. Let me go into this piece just a little bit, um, which was sort of the the group circles and uh, the uh, George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this one's maybe a little bit heavier, but um, it's I think it speaks to to something like core about us as humans, right? Is that uh, evolutionarily we say we we establish these tribes like these circles, and we say you're in the tribe. I and there's a lot of power in that. I will protect you. I will. I will guard you. I will. I will like help your kids. Like these. These are all things that are like in us at some at some evolutionary level. But at the same time, 
there's uh, the the opposite side of that coin is if you're not in the group, like you see, you can see, like your fellow your fellow human being as you know an enemy as a threat. There there was something like the the George Floyd incident was, um, you know, obviously you know terrible. There there was a piece of me though that was like this was this the. And, them getting getting the the video footage of, of the evidence as it happened and George Floyd, you know, this, the crazy stories about. So you can hear him calling for his mom. It turns out his mom had been dead for like mm-hmm. a couple of years. That's yeah. I think such a powerful thing just to hear about that. I thought for sure, I thought for sure the the everyone circles was going to grow that day. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. to say to be like that that was that that was an American right there. That just that just died calling for his calling out to his mom, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and there's it, being able being able to get past some of those evolutionary, like to, to leverage the good pieces of our evolutionary um, hardware, maybe you can mm-hmm. say, while mm-hmm. being able to to know how to how to get out of you know the, the pitfalls of that too, to see to see other people as the other, and to to have your mm-hmm. group be bigger. That group circle be bigger so that mm-hmm. you can see, you know that that was a brother. That was that was uh, that was someone's son. Mm-hmm. That was you know that, that was not that different than me. And that, mm-hmm. that this could happen. This could happen to me. I thought for sure that was what was going to happen, especially with you know everyone kind of you know clamped up because of COVID. But mm-hmm. like the the sparks, the the way that played out, man, that's that was kind of scary to me. It's still kind of scary. But I don't know. Do you, I'd be I'd be very interested to hear some of your thoughts on this. You know, Zach, I think that one of the things we have to consider when that happened, man, is if we go back to emotional intelligence, right, and bring it full yeah. circle, there was a level of empathy that I've never seen before in this world, right? Because yeah. you, for me, my experience as as a as a black person in this country, um, and just for so many is not being able to breathe, right? Breathing is is being able to, I look, I, I define breathing in this context as being able to live openly, without fear, um, you know, just unhinged. And for so many black and brown folks, that's not the reality. And I think that COVID, the, the negative all, with all the negative of COVID, it kind of let everyone experience what it's like to not be able to breathe, right? Because we had to be separated from each other and not, we couldn't breathe the same air in the same spaces because how this thing would spread, right? Yeah. So we all knew what it's like literally to not be able to breathe and to not feel comfortable at all times and to be under this cloud of uncertainty. That's kind of like the black and brown experience. Um, and I think that what we saw when George Floyd was like murdered right on camera was every mother, regardless if you were black, whether you were white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, Southeast Asian, you know what I'm saying, Pacific, you know, regardless, you can resonate with what it is to see your son crying for his mother as he's taking his last breath. Like the empathy we got to experience Every mother saying, imagine that they imagine their son when he's screaming, Mama, Mama, they imagine their son. So that's why across the world there were protests like we've never seen before, yeah. right? Um, because for the this was captured on camera, it was validating, you know, this is a, a fear that, you know, as a black person I have and so many of us have had. Um, but it also, it also showed this empathy because we were, you know, we were all in the same place if we couldn't breathe. You know what I'm saying? Like breathing in the same spaces in, in a, con- a a gathering of people was a death sentence during COVID. Yeah. Because we didn't have a vaccine, we didn't have any type of treatment. You know, people were dying left and right. So the the problem sometimes though is it takes tragedy to bring us together. Exactly. Mm. It takes tragedy to make us become empathetic, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, that's do problematic. Like that's, do you think that's been the case? Or do you feel like? Like I feel in some ways, I, I thought we, that's what was going to happen. Like sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes I look at it, I see more division now. I don't understand it. You know, I think because you know the the, the division. They, they, this has brought together a lot of people, right? 
Social yeah. media is the truth, but it's also deceiving at the same time, right? Oh, yeah, there's. It's like like we said. Like this has been the theme of the conversation. Is like, it's it's a tool. It could be used for either way, but it's look because you can the dashboard up. These yeah. kids, mm. they don't see the way that we see. Mm. They see each other with eyes of love, man. These kids are accepting and see each other with eyes of love in a way that we don't see, right? Because. One thing social media is, it's unifying in that sense. These kids, they see each other. They love each other. Granted, there's a lot of emotional issues and psychological issues that are happening as a result. But they mm-hmm. see different, man. They, they're a little more accepting and accepting and, 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 and they, they love different. You know, um, I think that what we're experiencing in this country, man, is just, it's political, right? Let's be honest. There's a heavy political aspect that is very divisive um in this country that came yeah. literally at right after in we it's i would say after in the midst of what we're dealing with in this pandemic right in the midst of what we're dealing with with tackling these racial issues in the midst of what we're dealing with with um tackling the economy right like because mm-hmm. remember we're all having a human experience through this whole journey and these processes that are happening literally right around us at the same time simultaneously right so we are heading in a better direction but there's still divisiveness at the same time right divisive rhetoric divisive in, in situations but i think what this shows us really is that when we bring us full circle is again when you have power and you're not self-aware of how that power plays out and, 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 and interacts with people in the public you know yeah and if you don't have that empathy and that social awareness to think about how do my messages interact with the public? Do they inspire or do they despair? Do they unify or do they divide? Right? Do they cause violence or do they cause peace? Is what I'm saying going to move us forward in a positive direction as a, in a, as a country, as a community, as a society? Or is what I'm saying going to further splinter and divide us, right? That's why that EQ is important and intelligent because it allows you to introspectively look in the mirror and ask those questions because power unchecked with emotional intelligence is dangerous. Influence without emotional intelligence is dangerous because you're not aware of your blind spots and how your blind spots can really be destructive. And I think that's what we see more than anything else. We suffer at the hands of leadership's blind spots. Hmm. Yeah. Because I, I don't have to, Zach, someone can tell me right now, look, man, all software engineers are evil, right? All coders are manipulative. And I could be having a conversation with you. And now I have a certain perspective of you without knowing you as a person. Hmm. Because of what someone told me about your profession. Because of what someone told me about that. Division, divisiveness. Yeah. Think about these wars. People go to war. Frank Brady, I'm going to war with someone in another country. We don't have an issue, but our leaders have an issue. Yeah, yeah. And oh, now dude, we're I, was, I, I, I was hearing, I, I heard this story recently about, um, I think it was World War I. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was Germans and Russians fighting. Mm-hmm. And they, um, they ended up having a ceasefire because there were wolves that were coming in and picking off the, the injured soldiers. So they, wow. they had they got together, they had a ceasefire so that they could go out and get rid of the wolves. And then as soon as they got rid of the wolves, guess what they did? <laughs> they went right back to fighting. And that was just like they were so close. Like they were so close. You you saw that there's the there's the opportunity for collaboration to, to understand, hey, maybe we're not maybe we're not the enemy. And like you said, like Frank Brady goes over overseas or Zach Rose goes overseas to, to fight some more. That's like that that's that's some perspective I think that you know our generation is privileged to have to, to yeah. know that you know this this person over here is um, you know, they're, probably, they're probably not that different from me. Yeah. Well, why are we fighting these wars? It's so. the leadership, man. Leadership is important. Whoever's leading, they set the narrative. Mm. They set the they set the narrative and the direction. Yeah. And if that's divisive, then it's going to divide us as a society and a community. Yeah. You know. Think about in, in that, that analogy you just gave. They had a ceasefire because they had a common enemy. They had a common situation. Yeah. Wolves didn't care. The wolves didn't care whether 
you were on what side of the aisle you were on the wolves didn't care you know what country what war force that you were on they had no care they yeah. just saw food and opportunity and they were yeah. picking them off yeah same thing with COVID. COVID didn't care he was rich he was white mm-hmm. he was black you, where you was at you were in danger that's deep COVID didn't care COVID, COVID could care less yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying and i think that's that's what it is we don't we don't we don't see each other the way that we should see each other until we're in the same situations. Yeah, yeah. But That's I think I, th- I think one of the big things too, Frank, is I think it's incumbent on us and our generation. I think we're really at like this crossroads right now in terms of human history, where like like you said, COVID's like COVID's the wolf. It doesn't care. It doesn't care what's happening. It doesn't care like uh, who you are, what color of skin you are, what nationality you are. It's it's coming and it's laying waste but if we can come together and we can fix that and but and we can see if we could break that cycle you know like i said they were so close that time what if we could do that where <laughs> we had that we, we brought everyone together to to beat covid but then like we realized hey you know we did it <laughs> like this is like, across country lines those, those are those are our brothers and sisters those are those are our fellow humans right there look let me tell you man if you notice Empathy is always at an all-time high after and the tail end of start and start in the process of tragedy. That's when empathy is at an all-time high. Mm-hmm. 9/11 saw us unite. You remember, bro? Like we were in middle school. Yeah. 9/11 saw us unite, man, and show love to each other. I just don't. I don't say I don't. I, I get it, right? That doesn't mean I agree with it. It shouldn't take tragedy for us to be empathetic with one another. Yeah. But unfortunately. That's what it is, because the thing, the, the reality of, of it is tragedy gets us ex- access our emotions in a way that we don't generally access them. And yeah. that's when we become empathetic, because it's a sweeping tragedy that affects us all. And that's when we access our emotions and, and, and connect with them and then connect with each other, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, I do remember, I, like, I remember that day. I was, I was actually in high school, I guess. I was... Uh, I think that was freshman year. I remember in like physics class sitting there and watching. They they brought in the the TVs so we could see what was happening. Mm-hmm. That was tough, and I, but I, I do recall as you were saying, like there was this there's this feeling of um, you know being together, like this this togetherness that was that was present there. I remember like considering going into like um, like the Marines or something like that yep. because because of it. But that yep. like. Going back to like what we were just talking about, it was like that, and bring a full circle with the, the group circles. It was like that was, yeah, that was, um, you know, the, those those attacks were then used to to go after to start other wars and yep. to to start wars with uh, countries that I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not my history is not where it should be, but I, I think the countries that were involved with. With what was what mm-hmm. happened there, so mm-hmm. it was, um, yeah. Seeing seeing those things and, and recognizing that, I think the uh, the incumbency on our generation to to figure out how how we can break these things because we're like like I said we're at a crossroads. Like this could be this could be it. <laughs> I don't know. This could be it, but this could also be the start of of a lot. Like between technology, between communication. The, the advances in communication that we've made in our generation, like you said, yeah. born without the internet, now it's now it's all around us. So yeah, no, we we, we we are at a crossroads right now, man, and I think it's a very important. The problem I, I'm seeing, I'll mm-hmm. be honest with you, Zach, is that the crossroads we're going into is a digital crossroads too, mm-hmm. right? It's a transition point. It's a super transition point. That's the next five to ten years is going to be crazy. Um, because we think about where technology was digitally 10 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And then look how things advance. It's, it's as time grows, we advance at a quicker and more rapid rate. So what we're seeing, what we're going to see soon, the next five years, where we're Metaverse. going, <laughs> like, the biggest problem is going to be mindset, mental mm-hmm. and emotional. That's what we're seeing. That's what everything is boiling down to, our mental and emotional state of mind and state of being. 
how developed is that? How healthy is that? Because that really is the core that shapes our interactions with everything and everybody. Our ideology, you know, our values, our mental and emotional state of mind, yeah. right? It's, it starts with the mind, man. And yeah. that's why this digital piece is so important because the digital influences the mess out of our minds. Direct access, direct plugs into our minds, yeah. you know? And that is going to determine what the next five to ten years look like above anything else. Yeah, yeah. The, the, That's what everyone's fighting for. Advertisers are fighting for influence over our minds. Mm-hmm. Psychologists are fighting for inf- Psychologists that work with advertisers are fighting for influence over our minds mm-hmm. to get us to make purchases, to get us to support brands. To, it's always a race, a rat race to see who can we, how our, how, how we, the influence, yeah. right? Yeah. F- figuring out how to, how to, how to, like you said, with the stream, figuring mm-hmm. out what we can do, what boulders we can put in to, to start pushing this in the, in the other direction. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like we're, that's what we're trying to do right here. So that's, that's something at least, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited Frank, to, to continue working with you in, in our generation to try to help turns this thing around for the generation that comes after us and learning yeah. from the generation that came before us. Those, those of Bingo. us who are generous enough Bingo. to, you know, share their experiences, to share those, um, the, what they've learned and pass it on to us so we can pass it on to the generation that comes after us. That's, and that's uh, the key is that, you know, people mm-hmm. wait for big movements to happen. A movement doesn't happen waiting for someone to be the, the central figure. A movement happens with how we interact with the people in our lives on an everyday basis. Mm-hmm. If you wait for one person to rally a thousand people, you're gonna be waiting a long time. Yeah. But if you wait for a thousand people to make one action, you don't gotta wait too long. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. that's that's precisely one of one of the one of the best things about the internet. It's like exactly. like getting like like you said, <laughs> My YouTube channel is at like 200 subscribers right now, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully that will grow. But the um, the that audience is there. Like there's millions of people out there, you know, uh, mm-hmm. waiting to, you know, if all you can do is just hit one, like that, that's mm-hmm. all you need. That's all you need, and that person can go out and hit their one. And that person can go ahead and hit. Their one. It's a net. Like that's that's what they call it. The net. These things all these things all connect. So you don't yeah. need you don't need to I don't need to have thousands of subscribers. That's that's what I'm telling myself right now. We'll hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> right? That's that's the thing. Is like um, with with our generation, we don't we don't need that. We we've got we've got these things where we can set the spark, and that spark can go out. Like like you were that's saying before. The key. Yeah. What is the spark that we can set in someone's life? And when we understand the spark that we can set in somebody's life. That's the key, because that person is going to spark another person, another person. Hey, that spark might not set some person on fire that you spark, but the next person that gets sparked, that person might get set on fire and then go crazy. Yeah. With the spark that you gave to someone else, we will never know. This. If you ever looked at the ripple effect, right? When you drop a, a, a rock in the middle of water, yeah. the pond, a body of water, the ripple waves, you know. They move outward, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know how far those things move. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But so you know, one drop on the other side of the ocean. Boom, yeah. one drop. Boom. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It spreads. So we, we can't wait for movements, man. We just have to do it in our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. He, you know, you you ever think about Zach? How many people you will interact with over the course of your life? Literally, through conversations, through going to the store, like. We inter I, I never thought about this, but we interact with a lot of people just every day, going mm-hmm. to the stores, going on vacations, going on planes, conversations, random. And if you tally that up, you can spark a lot of people just by living. Yeah. You know, that, that's, you really got me thinking because I don't know if I think about things those ways. Like, like, like the way you're, the way you're um, describing, like, understanding like i i think i think there's there's a lot of like self-awareness that i'm trying to work on mm-hmm. but i don't know if i'm working on being aware of the spark i'm sending out you know we I'm all saying? need to do that because whether we're aware of not or not we're sending something out you see what i'm yeah. saying 
Yeah. Something is going out, whether we're aware or not. So when we're aware, we're more intentional. Like, yo, what do I want to give the world today? Like, mm-hmm. I wake up and ask myself, what do I want to give the world today? What's your well, answer? I want to give them hope. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. You know what I'm saying? And that hope yeah. is going to take different forms, you know, depending on where I'm at in my life. It's going to be take different messages, you know, mm-hmm. and but it's going to be hopeful. Yeah. I think that's a great place to end this conversation, Frank. What, what do you think? Yeah, man. I think <laughs> I think we touched on a great thing, man. Um, I wrap up with saying, look, man, human connection and faith. I, I like that piece. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just really big. I think life moves at the speed of connections that we have, you know? Um, and I think even from a faith perspective, I think faith is a big factor in a, a, a lot of, just about everything I do, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm on this earth to use my God-given gifts to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. when I die, I want to be able to say I gave everything I had to make people's lives better. And I yeah. believe that that's part of the role of faith. Like, how do you how do you how do you make someone believe in what they've never seen through you who they have seen through your actions? Because when we have the right actions, our actions speak louder than words, man. Action moves the world forward. And when we have genuine human connection and we treat each other in a certain way, um, we we are handling each other with care, right? That piece, you know what I'm saying? What ends up happening is we heal the world by healing ourselves, by healing each other, because we handle each other the right way, you know? Mm-hmm. And regardless of what people believe faith-wise, people have different faith in different things, whether it's faith spiritually, faith in God, maybe folks don't believe in God and everything like that. But mm-hmm. the reality is that we play, we play a role in how we, in, in our interactions, how folks believe in general, right? You, you, your interaction with someone can, can leave them with a positive perspective on belief and faith or negative, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Depending yeah. on how you show up in the world, you know? So for me, and this is for me personally, my goal, again, every day I wake up, what can I, what do I want to give the world today? Yeah. And I want to give them hope. My hope comes from my faith in God at the, at the, at the, at the base level and the root foundation is my faith in God, right? That's where my hope comes from. If I can share that with people, then, you know, in a way that makes their life better, that's really the goal. Yeah. And then if I share something with someone that's going to make their life better, hey, they want to learn more about that, then cool, that's on them, right? Again, that's another part of being a spark, you know? But if I have a good human connection with them, that's even better. Mm. If I have a crappy interaction with them, what do I want to hear? Why would I want to get? Why do I? Why would I want to hear from hope from you? You just gave me a crappy interaction. Yeah. But if I leave you with a positive interaction that improves your life in some way, shape, or form, even if it's a smile, even if I make you smile, like I love going to re- retail stores and calling cashiers by their name. Mm. I love going into to, to McDonald's and saying, "Thanks so much, Jessica." Right? Because they're people. Yeah. Right? You know. Human interaction, man. Human connection is everything. Yeah, that that's that spark you're talking about. Mm-hmm. That, that could be a spark for their day, just to just to make it just a little bit better. Just um, like that. How, how much time do you have? Like, I, I, I got time, man. Okay, okay. Let's let's go into this. Let's go into this. <laughs> I tried to wrap it up too soon. Um, okay. There, there's been so I uh, just to you know just to be real on this one. Um, I feel like for me, there has been some aspect of, um, you know, I, I'm a Christian. I, I, for, there, there's been parts of my life where that has been um, the the defining factor, I think, of my life. And I think in some ways um, there was things I had to learn about that, that I think I'm finally starting to realize um some of those lessons, because when you, when you look at the teachings of Jesus, one of the things that stands out, I think, is talking about the Pharisees and talking about people in religious power, people that had set up religious systems around around you know God, right? Mm-hmm. Around like the this this positive influence, this positive being um, mm-hmm. over, over creation, right? So so this is sort of the, the framework we're we're looking at. And I think, I think for for a lot of the time I had been in there, 
it was I, I was I was optimizing for the system instead of optimizing for the for the truth. And there was so so my dad my dad's a, a professor at, at Yale University and mm-hmm. um He's got this thing, he's got this quote on his um, website from uh, Huckleberry Finn. And there's, there's the, um, uh, uh, the for, for people listening, the, like the, uh, the story is about Huckleberry Finn uh, helping, helping a runaway slave get, get to freedom. And he's faced with this, this choice where he thinks the Christian thing to do is to, to give up his friend Jim to, to, the, to his his owners, right, to his slave owners, and give give them back, and he's he's thinking about this because you know it seems like it seems like a Christian thing to do at the time, but he he's faced with this dilemma and he's he doesn't know what to do, and at the end of the day he says, "Well, screw it, I'll go to hell, <laughs> and I'll I'll set Jim free," mm-hmm. and that was like that that quote has been on my dad's website for years. And I never, and I never got it. But that was, that was it. It was saying, you know, that this optimizing for the system isn't isn't the thing to do. It's optimizing for truth. And yeah, um, yeah for me, figuring that out, figuring that piece out, where it was, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, I, hope I, I wasn't doing anything that bad. I hope, but the the motivations were to be a better Christian, not to be a better person. And something about that, I don't, I don't even know what what it was that caused it. But recently, it's been, you know, I don't want to be a godly person anymore. I want to be a good person. And I think, in some ways, that's what Jesus came to tell us. You know, that's that's mm-hmm. that's the message was to to come, you know, come be a positive influence on the world. Like when when you see the the influence of this of this carpenter in, in Nazareth that has had on the world and on human history, like that's that is the like. The original spark. Right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, Think about it. No, you're right. No, you are right. I'm going to tell you why you're right. Because being a good person, just treating the Bible stuff like love your neighbors, you love yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Like being a good person is an underrated thing. You know, mm-hmm. caring about your fellow man is an underrated thing. Um, yeah. You know, being a, a a force of you know positive force of nature is an underrated thing, you know. And I lo- what I like with your your role, man. You know, you, this carpenter s- said he came, this carpenter came through and said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna move on my purpose, right? Move on my call on my purpose, right? But this place is this world is gonna be better because I was here, mm-hmm. right? He was very, very open, very non-judgmental. He inspired people to want to follow him. Mm-hmm. He didn't, you know, he, he he inspired people. He drew people through his actions, through how he dealt with people. You know, he hung out with all types of people. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. And not only did he hang out with all types of people, he embraced all types of people, mm-hmm. right? And if they were dealing and dealing and struggling with stuff, sure, they changed as a result of being around him and him letting them be who they are, mm-hmm. right? And they end up, end, up, end up changing a lot about who they were because of his influence. Exposure is critical, right? Yeah. He stood on who he was. You know, a lot of examples and parallels we can draw from that in our lives, but most importantly, he was definitely a spark. And he was a man of action. Action changed people's lives, man. Yeah. He said, but, oh, you're, you're hungry? Cool. We're going 5,000. Easy. Mm-hmm. Bread, fish. You know, people need people got needs that need to be met, man. You, 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 you can't. To me, saying I love you is helping you meet a need in your life. That's a, one of the biggest I love you, love you I can give is, yo, what's a need I can meet? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's what, I, that's what I've drawn from, you know, being, being a believer myself. That's what I'm drawing from it. Like, yo, I, I love you. Is what's what's your need? How can I help you meet that, or assist you in that? That's a big yeah. thing, man. That's an underrated thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and just looking at looking at the the gifts that you know Christianity has to provide to the world, it's like that 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 lesson that um, that's that's in our history, you know, in in human history. Like, what, what year is it? It's it's 2021. Yeah, that's 2021 years since since 
Jesus was born. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that like that that whole influence, all that influence was the the one man, uh, son of God, uh, mm-hmm. if you will. <laughs> but but him and the the twelve. 12 disciples, the 12, that connection uh, network of 12 people Mm -hmm. was able to go out and create the ripples that that kind of helped helped the world become where it was today. And then, you know, um, I think Christianity has been used as a, as a tool for a lot of negative things as well. Yep. That's, that's one of like the self-healing systems, I think, about the teachings that Jesus gave us about the Pharisees. It's like, don't be, be wary of the systems. Beware of the systems. Instead, focus on the truth, bro. Because anybody can, man. Because anybody can create a system. Yeah. Anybody can tweak, can alter a system based on how they're feeling, based on their agenda. Mm. When you connect it to the truth, it hits different. But yeah. anybody could alter a system, man. Anybody could shift the system. Yeah. Anybody can use a system to shame people. Anybody can use a system to judge people to make people feel like they can't live on this earth and flourish the system is in and whoever is over you know anyone can do that but when you connect to the truth like everybody gotta be connected to the truth for themselves yeah you know it's that individual that because then that can weed out is this a good system for me or not right (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah 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 100 but i think i think at at some level frank i I think that's not that difference about what we were talking about with facebook Mm -hmm. just a little bit ago where like the the system the system that we're we're building right now uh for for social media like you you gave out that dashboard and people used it right but in throughout throughout history i think you know people use that dashboard of christianity there's a lot of power in that like and people use it super super yeah Yeah, the, the you look at the the history of of Rome and adopting Christianity as a tool to, it seems like as a tool to keep people in line, mm-hmm. and and then them being used for some some negative things there as well. But mm-hmm. the the self healing piece of that, like of those teachings, telling you to be wary of the system because you know people pe- people when they, when there's power they'll use it. Like when mm-hmm. there's power they'll use it and they'll use it for for things that that system wasn't meant to do. Power and influence, man, and, and those are the things, power and influence. And when you're not self-aware, <laughs> you don't, you know, you're not self-aware. And when you're not, when you don't have a, 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 a you can't manage what's going on inside you. Yeah. One of the most dangerous things, you know, Zach, is a leader that lacks self-awareness. That is probably one of the most dangerous things. Or a leader that's not aware of their blind spots, man. Because yeah. when again, blind spots are what. Pe- this is what I said. I said this to a friend of mine. Um, blind spots are the shovels that dig people's graves. Mm. That's really what it is. Blind spots are the shovels that dig people's graves. Because you're not aware of this blind spot, right? You're not aware. That means you haven't done enough work on yourself to understand how does this affect me. How does this affect people? then you can damage and destroy a lot of lives without even knowing that you're doing it. And you're thinking you're doing everything great mm-hmm. because you're blind in that certain area of your life. So yeah, leadership that doesn't have self-awareness is very dangerous. That's that's one of the things I've, I've noticed. You know, um, yeah, as, as I'm going through my career, and, you know, in, in terms of what, when I think about my influence and my, uh, my impact on the world, mm-hmm. I, I'm often thinking about that. Like I, I have a lot of respect for the leaders that I've been able to witness uh, mm-hmm. firsthand, but all of them have those blind spots, right? Mm-hmm. And and figuring out like in some ways my uh, my job right now is that is to help them be aware of those blind spots. Like that's that's what they what what people keep you around for, and that's, that's something nice. you gotta kind of like encourage. Uh, people to do so you can you can have the feedback because the, the whole point of the blind spot is you're blind to it you, you gotta have you gotta have the, the community in place so that you can know uh what's happening with that but to be able to see those things and to try to form like the person i want to be uh informed by by those blind spots i've seen and by informed by um well, how, do, how do you how do you become aware of those blind spots and how do we address them and 
what's your what's your attitude towards them when you hear it like hearing about a blind spot can be a very like that could put people in a very defensive position mm-hmm. right like you, no one wants to hear that they're not perfect like we all know we're not but no one wants to hear we that. all know we're not perfect I, I like that quote we all know we're not perfect but no one wants to hear that we're not perfect right exactly, exactly. <laughs> especially mean, when it's coming from someone you trust like that that can that can be really hard but it's so important we hear that right it shouldn't be hard though for somebody you trust it should be actually like comforting because it's like, man, if for somebody you trust, that means you have a relationship with them. That mm-hmm. means they know how to navigate you a little, you know, a little bit. But I think every every person that's a leader, man, they need to have people that can pull their coattail. But you need to yeah. you need to know how to pull somebody's coattail in a way they're going to receive it. Yeah, you know, it's if we if we look at things like the five love languages, which I don't believe are just love languages. The communication languages, right? Mm. Acts of service, words of affirmation, um, you know, those those are communication languages. Mm. You know, and so if I if somebody's a leader and you talk to them in a way that's like, hey, I'm gonna just speak to you on these words piece, but they don't receive that, they need a gift. Here, here's a book on this. Yeah. And you put them in a situation where they can read and adjust their process based on how they receive information. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you only get that a lot of times through trust and knowing someone. So I would think that hearing it from somebody that you trust would would, would actually be better than someone that you don't trust and you don't, you know, because they may not know how to deliver the message to you in a way that you're gonna receive it that aligns with how you communicate. That's a different level of trust and intentionality, right there. A hundred percent. But I, I guess what I was thinking of is if it's if it is someone I trust, if it is someone I've invested that time with. To know right. that they don't see me that way, to, to know that they don't see me the way that I pictured myself, that can that can hurt. But it's right. something that you need to hear so that you can yes. improve, right? Yes, you got to, man. If you're if your folks that are closest to you can't help you understand your blinds, because even language is important, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you, you notice we use a lot of language sometimes that's corrective language, that is forceful. Anything forceful is going to be, you're going to get defensiveness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are there's, there's, so big on it. And yeah, I, no, I, you ever thought about that, Zach? We are so big on it. Like, mm. and, I, and I understand accountability is accountability. And I'm big on holding folks accountable and mm. being held accountable. But everything is forceful, right? Yeah. Even the language, I just pull your coattail, get you back in line, set you straight versus help you see a blind spot. Yeah. You understand what your language is important. Yeah, it, it is. And but there's, uh, in some ways, that's like a helpful. It's a helpful tool in when 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 that that trust isn't there, when that relationship isn't there. So that like, well, you and me, like, haven't seen each other for years, <laughs> but we're able to we're able to get through some of these things because we're being we're being polite, we're packaging it nice. Mm-hmm. But if 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 there was the the relationship there, if there was that framework, if there's that economy already there, you know. <laughs> That that could make things more efficient. You could just tell me, shut up, Zach. <laughs> you know, this is off. You gotta get this right. You, you're you're off in this place. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think there's a time and place for everything, right? Mm. Um, and I, I think for me, what I've learned is that even I think for even from my from my personal relationship, even like the way I talk now is generally the way I talk, just because of my background. I have a therapeutic background, right? Okay. Um, okay. I have a I want to say, I just understand the stuff, man. I understand psychology and communication, mm. you know? So you, I think you adapt and adjust for who your audience is and who you're, you're communicating with. I think that's big. But also, everybody inherently wants to be talked to in a way that they're going to receive, mm. you know? You, you ever thought about this, Zach? Companies spend, companies have these inexhaustive advertising and marketing budgets, right? Yeah. Yeah. They spend millions of dollars trying to get a message to someone. Yeah. In the most effective way possible. But what they're doing, they're trying to get through the defenses, right? They're trying to get through, cut through the noise. They're trying to get the message to their target demographics. Right. 
and, and why did they put that much that much resources and that much funding behind it? Because right. because they know the power behind it, right? They know the power behind it. Mm-hmm. So my 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 thesis is this: if companies do this to get to us, then why don't we do this to get to us? Yeah, that's free. <laughs> that, you that's know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I mean. So that's what when I talk, when I'm very intentional. I don't even say package with what I say now. I'm just very intentional with the words I use because I know words have power. Yeah. Um, you know, and I want to make sure that I'm not wasting any words, mm-hmm. that I'm being very specific with the words that I use. Yeah. So I can get the message. I, I don't want I don't so I, I'm very big on I don't want you to have to spend time trying to understand my delivery. I want you to get my message. I hear you. I want hear you, you to that. understand my message rather than Wow, I don't necessarily like the way he said that to me. Maybe that triggers something in me, and I now I gotta crap. He told me to shut up, and then <laughs> why are you talking to me like that? Do you, do you have those what relationships though in, in your inner circle, Frank? Where you, where uh-huh. you can like there's those the the communication has that grease on it, where you can you can get to those things efficiently, or or is is this how you communicate with your with your inner circle as well? This is how I communicate with my inner circle. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I've, I've learned that, you know, and it, it's probably, you know, it's always, it's probably with a little more jokes, right? It's probably, yeah. definitely, I think we, we're a little more jokey and comical, mm-hmm. right? But we also in a, in a politically, a PC society, right? That we we are trained to be intentional with our words. No, I don't say intentional. That's not the word. This society doesn't train us to be intentional with our words. Society trains us to be careful, right, with our words. Um, careful, but also it's, it's, it's so funny because when I say when I talk about society's influence, it can get very it's divided as that, right? Because part of society trains us to be very intentional with our words, and then another part of society trains us to not care what we say. So I yeah. think I find being this nice little middle part, right, of being able to be intentional with what I'm saying, but making sure it's honoring my freedom of speech and freedom to express myself. That's why mm-hmm. I try and be this very. This is middle place, you know, because think about this, Zach. This is the biggest, the best example I can put of this. When we're kids in school, we're, turned out, we're told not to use profanity, right? Mm. We speak a certain way in school. But then when you become a staff member in school, if you go to the, 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 the teacher break rooms, folks are cussing, folks are doing this and that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're training kids not to do the very things we do as adults, freely, yeah. right? And they can smell smell that. that. They can smell that. (laughs) Companies, water cooler talk, all of that stuff. So that's why I try and be in this 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 intentional space Mm -hmm. of being honest, right? Yeah. Being considerate of what I'm saying. There we go. Right. I I I think so. I I see what you're saying, and I think like like you said, words have a lot of power, and words have especially um, as they're. you know, uh, being intentional with your words is very important. But there's also something, Frank, I wonder about, which is the the effort that you put into hitting that middle ground. Uh, there, if there's something lost in the efficiency, where if you could instead like focus on being, you know, genuinely you and genuinely like, you know, w- without without worrying about hitting a target and to instead getting that message out into the world and to, I don't know, they, I don't know. You see where I'm going with this? I do. I see, what, I see where you're going with it, man. I think what I've learned is that because people receive information so differently, mm-hmm. right, being intentional tries to make sure, how do I get the information to you in the most efficient way possible? Mm-hmm. I say it this way, you may not understand it. I say it with this, another way, you may not understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, I think what we see on social media is folks throwing out messages that are unfiltered, right? Yeah. And it, it'll hit its shock value sometimes too, right? Yeah. Sometimes it does work. But I think I, I respond to the, 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 the error and the time that we're in. Whereas the messages that people receive, mm-hmm. they're not intentional enough for them to receive them without worrying about how the message was given to them. Exactly. You know, yeah. so I want you to not think about how I did it. I want you to think about what I said. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so um, I, I don't want to get too political about this, but I always mm-hmm. thought that like Trump was weird at like weirdly good at this one thing. 
I'm, I'm not a fan of his, just to be clear <laughs> on that mm-hmm. point. But he was able to put out this, uh, just with the way he would communicate, he would put out this this wildly open, like un- almost unintentional message. And people would take that and take it whatever way they wanted to. So like his base would make it to this really big positive thing. Mm-hmm. People against him would take that and turn it into like this really negative thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like he knew, you know? Do, do you, did you see that too? When it, Trump, I guess he's on Twitter now, right? Trump is a Trump is a unintentional. He's a genius in certain ways, but he's also he has he has deficits in other extreme ways at the same time, right? Mm. The reason why his messaging was successful is because people are tired of the political packaging too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in a sense, they're tired of political packaging. Um, and he kind of spoke for the guy that didn't give a crap and yeah. just said whatever he wanted to say in his mind, regardless of the audience, and he received it. So that energized certain people, but then again, it also caused, again, certain damage to certain folks because yeah. he's not a, he's not being really aware. Of, he doesn't care how the message lands or where he's going to say it. So that's an example of unfiltered messaging. It's going to yeah. amp some people up, but it's going to mess some people up at the same time. Yeah. Unfiltered messaging, man. And yeah. But he, he about, took that he took that power of communication, cashed it out to the to the highest office in the land. Like that's Yeah, but he's insane. Yep. <laughs> yep. And here's the thing, tools work with, again, it's the tool. Depending yeah. it, it, it's depending on who's behind the wheel, but the tool is gonna work. Yeah. Right? So what did what did he do? He spoke to a fear that a lot of folks have had, right? He spoke to elements of fear. He spoke to elements of um we're tired of the status quo business as usual, mm-hmm. you know. Um, he also spoke to a country that was, div- you know, that was divided beforehand um, based on, you know, the election of our last president that felt like power was shifting in a direction that they didn't want to shift. So then he, he, he represented the swing back of a pendulum, right, mm-hmm. of a power structure. So he spoke to that as well. And yeah. When you speak to all those things, again, people have needs, right? People have needs, people have fears. And what it, the question at the end of the day is, what are you speaking to, mm-hmm. right? And he spoke to a lot of those things that part of the country was feeling, yeah. you know? Um, now, the, the, there's, 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 a, there's a piece that's going to come into there regarding just, you know, ethics, right? Um, and, and just decency, you know, um, and yeah. consideration. You know that that I that I think that you know he's an equal opportunity person when it comes to being inconsiderate to how people receive information. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, and, equal sorry, opportunity. He's inconsiderate. <laughs> um, yeah. Across, I think across the board at times, mm-hmm. but for those that he energizes, he is the man. Yeah. Well, I think I think there's something about him. So so. Uh, you know, I think there's some people talking about whether he's going to run next election or not. But I think regardless of what that happens, we, we opened the Pandora's box. That's not how oh, heck yeah. Like, there's going to be people seeing that that model and taking it. Well, and I think as, like, as intentional, as people who want to be intentional leaders for, for the next generation going forward, like, I, I feel like what we're both trying to do is, like, figuring out how to take, how to take the, uh, the power of communication that he was able to leverage there, but to be the people we want to be, to, to actually provide real yeah. value, to actually He has a book for... called The Art of the Deal. Yeah. And, right, and he, he, he just... I don't think he wrote way. that, dude. <laughs> well, probably not. He, he knows how to... Something, so, you know, like I said, man, I'm not a fan of him. Um, yeah. But I can understand. I learned, I've had to study him a little bit, right? Yeah. Um. So I'm not a fan of him. I don't even think he's racist. I just mm. think he's the equal opportunity, you know, like just he's 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 trash to a lot of folks that don't disagree with him. You've seen it in the in the election and in the debates, how he was to Rubio, just disrespectful, right? Yeah. I'm cool from disrespectful, but it's across the board. Yeah. But it can come off it's, as racist. Because, it's so insane you know, to see that too, man. Yeah. Just like the the way he trashed those people and then, and then they come back. And then they come back and they're like yeah, uh, once once he's president, once he has the power, they just come right back around and they're like, yeah, because he, 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 he dominates them. 
Yeah. You know, when you dominate someone, you kind of take something from them. So he's very domineering, kind of narcissistic too, right? But very mm-hmm. domineering in that way. Again, a lot of power misapplied. Um, mm-hmm. because you know, we saw what happened with the insurrection at, at the at the at the Capitol. And yeah. that was a, a, a prime example of power misapplied. Um leadership so, without self awareness, so self awareness, so self management and social awareness because if you were aware of the words and what you were inciting, you know, your words had the power and we saw the manifestation of that power take place on January sixth. Yes. You know, so it, it I think it really again it comes down to, you know, how are you guiding what you say with intention? Yeah. And how it's gonna what is it what's the impact it's gonna have on the audience that you're speaking to? We saw the impact, you know, mm-hmm. and I think one of the things with him, with all of his influence and the platform that he has, and the platform, let's be honest, was also built from social media, from his T V shows, right? Yeah. From the apprentice. He has a lot of power that was built over time, yeah. and he rec- he he personifies someone that couldn't be controlled, that couldn't be bought. So that's what excited a lot of people about him. And mm-hmm. I think he had a golden opportunity to really do some amazing things yeah. in the country, but his lack of self awareness kind of derailed a yeah. lot of that. I, I think there was there was an element of like when you talk about the system, putting up a system around the real truth. He was really good at doing that, but there was a when, when it came time to like pay the piper, there was there was the truth wasn't there. It was like draining the swamp. I think I think a lot of us kind of resonate with that sentiment. But the 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 way that that came through, it was like that we didn't drain the swamp. <laughs> like they, they didn't drain the swamp. They just made it bigger, or they they changed the flavor of it. Maybe I don't know. It's like it wasn't there, but like the um. Sort sort of this uh, this idea of um, you know the people who are in power like they they use that they they use the system themselves to put themselves in those positions but then when it's time to do what they were put there to do take care of their constituents it's they're 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 not doing that like may, maybe some of them are but it's it's my and, it's my sense that they're they're out there they're like out there it. tricking people into voting them yeah. and then making profit. And that, that's one thing, that's one thing, Zach, but then the other part, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second, sure. right? Go for it. The other part of that, you know, I have a friend that's like, you know, he taught me a lot about politics in terms of, he just always talked about it. And, you know, the other thing is we expect a lot from our leaders, but not enough from our, we expect a lot more from our national leaders than we do from our, our, our local leaders, mm. right? Where a lot of these changes that we want move at the speed of local leadership. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's again movement theory. You're waiting for one person to rally a thousand or a thousand people to take action. Yeah. You know, so we have local, we have all the manic leadership, mayoral leadership, governor leadership, um, seats, you know, state representative leadership, senatorial leadership, three different branches of the government leadership, right? Mm-hmm. All of those influences the policies that, you know, shape the society that we live in. You know, so there's an element of this, you know, again, playing devil's advocate where it's like, look, they are they are definitely the 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 the, the, uh, the main elected leaders. But then there's also an accountability of all of these other leaders across the country and the state, local level as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, but because because politics in itself inherently, you know, if you look at it again, playing devil's advocate, you, the folks that are in place, you know, have promises to fulfill on. But they have to get passed through committees and everything, right? Yeah. And then we we only have to get into lobbyists and how that plays into all of this, because yeah, yeah. you know that's a whole other thing, man. Yeah, lobby, yeah, yeah. Man. I, I think there is an element though of you, you don't need the office to be a leader, right? And that that's that's one of the things I think you do really well. <laughs> it's like you're not you're not a public office, but you're you're out there doing the leadership. You're out there, you know, sending the message. You're out there doing the communication, mm-hmm. so that. Like we have, we have, we can turn the, we can turn the, the tide of the stream of the river without mm-hmm. having to, to hold those pieces of power, without having to work inside that system. Exactly. You know? I believe that, man. I believe that a lot, man. I believe that it just more people have to, 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 to become, just grow and become the best versions of themselves. 
and just start making changes incrementally. Again, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of people just do do what they can do. That goes a long way. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't wait for somebody to lead you. You got to lead yourself in a certain ways. Yeah. Yeah. Did, have you ever watched Game of Thrones by any chance? I haven't, man. That's the one no, sin I've committed. God forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forgive you for that. <laughs> let, let me hit on this thing. I'll, I'll explain it out. And hopefully it won't matter if you've seen it or not. There's there's this one. There's this one. So it's like the story of, of kingdoms, right? And leaders mm-hmm. and um, yeah, politics. A lot of it. So there's, there's, a, there's this one man, I categorize him as a good man, an honest man, mm-hmm. like a genuine man. Um, he's out there in, in the outposts in the north where it's like cold and it kind of sucks, but there's hardy people out there, right? Mm-hmm. But, and that kind of lends itself to being this genuine, real real kind of person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and he helped the, the person who owns the throne, the person in the, in the, uh, in the kingdom uh, needs someone to come be his right-hand man because... Like things are not going well. And there's there's all this politics happening, so mm-hmm. he, he calls out to Ned Stark. That's this this guy up in the north, uh, the Lord up in the north, uh, the the good man. He brings him down into the capital, and what happens is that um, he he does what a good man does. He goes and investigates these things. He tries to tries to make uh, the kingdom better. Tries to make it better for the people there, and he ends up getting killed <laughs> because mm-hmm. of it. And it's like it's because of the system. He, he was the way the way he tried to go about changing those things was, you know, thinking he could like brute force it, like goodness will come in and it will win out. It was mm-hmm. kind of his thinking. That was kind of like the, the the point of of like that that story arc. I think was it was kind of naive to think that. I think that's something that we can take for ourselves too. Is thinking like, well, if you, if you just um, if you just like go in and try to like just change politics by yourself, it's not going to go well. If, if either you're going to become the thing you didn't want to be, or you're going to you're going to get chewed up and, and spit out. That's sort of the way yeah. the way this uh, this guy from the north was. But so so that all happens in the first season. He gets killed in the first season. I'm spoiling the crap out of this series. It's okay, man. But, I'm so far behind. Yeah, yeah. It's I think it's done now too. Let's but, but, but cool, cool. I'm not spoiling. That's good, but the the way he actually does change the kingdom is through his children. Like his children go on to in, in the subsequent seasons to to actually bring meaningful change. And I think that speaks to what you were talking about, man. Where it's the sparks, it's the sparks and the the ripples you put out into the world yeah, that like put that out, and and that's that's where the meaningful change can come from. It's not from an individual. It's from a movement. It's from the it's from the thousand people, like you yeah. said, not not the one person. Them all together. Yeah, man. So. You got it, man. That's it. Hopefully, I package that all right. So that's it. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's but that's it. Yeah. That's it. Don't wait for an army. Be an army when you if army of one. Mm. Straight like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah army of one ain't gonna go very far. <laughs> but, but, yeah. put, put, put it out. Put it out. Those sparks. That that could be all. That could be all you need to do. And. Going back to what you said with with uh, the Tupac quote, like he's gonna he's gonna inspire. Maybe we can inspire that one person who's actually going to yeah, exactly, so. exactly. Frank, thank you so much for this conversation, man. I'm gonna try to wrap it up again. Do you have it? Do you have anything else you want to get into? Or exactly, like this man. has been such a great conversation. This has I, been I really fantastic, man. Um, thank you for having me on your podcast, man. I, I think you know. Thank you for the viewing audience, man. I hope everybody gets a lot of jewels and gems, you know, and at, at, at the core of this all is about just being a, be a good person, man. Like, be a bit good person and be considerate, and that will take you very far in life, you know? So um, thank you for having me, man. You know, for folks that are watching, you know, you can please follow me on my website, www.frankdbrady.com. So, Created by... Vision Fuel Entertainment. My tagline is I'm emotionally intelligent and social emotionally relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and again, I speak at companies. I speak at, uh, I'm a speaker. I'm an educator. I'm a consultant. I do, I do a little bit of everything. Man. I do some advertising and marketing help for companies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I do a little bit of everything, man. But I love to speak on social emotional, on emotional intelligence. Love to train on that and just, 
help folks become better versions of themselves to, to, to create an optimum output and productivity and capacity. Yeah, it, Frank, thank you so much for your generosity sharing that with us today. Yes, I appreciate that, sir. Everyone, Frank E. Brady, the Hope Dealer. Thanks, Frank. Let's wrap it up here. There's no more basic. There's no more room for basics.